Hello, how are you? A good night of Shabbos. Today is Erev Shabbos. Kodesh Pashas Bamidbar. Shabbos is Erev Shkodesh Sivan. Sunday, Mirza Hashem, Bezra Hashem is Barak, is Rosh Kodesh Sivan. So, what is the connection between all these Nyanim? And Al Derek Zayah, we're learning Perik Shishi of Perik Yavis. First of all, I hope everyone is Gizunt, Stark, and Freilach, Begash Mesubirachmis. I hope everyone is healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. We'll start with a prayer, and today's prayer is a gratitude and a blessing to Hashem for the Torah. It says that from Reish Chedish Sivan, our Hazal tell us, Hischil Moshe Lis Asak Imoyim, Moshe Rabbeinu started occupying himself seriously in preparing the Yidin for Matan Torah. The greatest experience in the history of the Jewish nation and as a matter of fact, the greatest experience in the history of mankind is the experience of Sinai Matan Torah. This is a subject we can talk about for weeks straight. So therefore, we have to prepare ourselves. Every good thing warrants preparation. The 49 days of Sirius Aimer was a preparation. Actually, from the moment of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim was the beginning the whole purpose, the whole point of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim was to come to Matan Torah. But in particular, starting from Rosh Chodesh Sivan, that's when we get serious about the preparations, and we'll speak about it soon. But first, let's give a blessing to Hashem for the greatest gift that we ever got, which is the Torah. And we say every single day, which is a very serious subject unto itself. But Baruch Ata Hashem Alekinu Melech Ha'ila Mash Kedishonu B'Mitzvaysa V'Tzivanu Al Divrei Seira. We thank Hashem for the words of Torah that He gave us, and then comes a blessing after that, V'Harevno, which means that we should find the words of Torah sweet. The next blessing is a very important blessing. It's brought down on Shulchan Aruch that if you have in mind properly. Kavona during the following bracha v'harav na, then it will be fulfilled that v'nia nachnu v'tetzoeinu v'tetzoei chol am chabes yisrael that may our children and the children of our children etc etc all the children should find the Torah sweet etc. So baruch Hashem baruch Hashem we have the Torah ma hafti seira secha kol ayemi sichasi. We have to so so nechali masecha kamitzi shalrov. We have to be always excited about Torah, Torah, Torah. So this week's parsha is called Bamidbar. All the commentaries and in the Rebbe Sichas, there's a lot about why we read, we start parshas Bamidbar before Shavuos. This year we also have Nasoi, but Bamidbar always comes before Shavuos. Sometimes Nasoi also. What's the connection between Sefer Bamidbar and Matan Torah? So, the Rebbe talks about in many places the concept of counting, similar to Rashi starts off over here, Miteche Basan, Mononois and Tomid, because Hashem loves the Yidin, therefore He counts them constantly. So we see the importance of Yidin. Everything is about Yidin. Matan Torah is about Yidin. As it says that, one second, Rashi, Miteche Basan, the front of Mononois and Kol Shah. Because Hashem loves us, He counts us constantly. Now, Matan Torah is about the entire Jewish people. Machshaftan Sheyisol Kodma Lechol Dover. The whole purpose of Torah was for the Jewish nation. As the famous Tanah Belio says, Mi Kodem Lemi, Torah or Bnei Yisrael. And we say B'nai Yisrael, because it says Tzav is B'nai Yisrael, David is B'nai Yisrael, Amir is B'nai Yisrael. First there has to be a B'nai Yisrael, and then there's a Torah. And actually, the Razal also say that if one person, one Neshama, would have been missing, if one Jew would have not been present by Sinai, the entire Torah could have not been given. How unbelievably awesome is that when you think about it that one person, one Yid makes the difference if the entire nation could be able to receive the law, the legacy think think of a secular law, a government what does the law have to do with if one person is present or not 
But over here, it's because Yisrael, and Yisrael is the most important thing, and therefore the Torah, the law, so to speak, without Yisrael is incomplete. It has to be the complete Shleim Sa'am, the complete nation, to make a complete Torah. I don't want to get into the philosophical, deep, deep concepts connected to that right now, but I just want to stress that we see straight away by Matan Torah the importance of how beloved and how special Yidnar, and we see that from the idea of counting. When you count something like a child that counts his cars, you know, those matchbox cars, Hot Wheels, you can see that they could gather it, they keep it put away, they could pour out the whole uh, container and play with them Shabbos after Shabbos, and the same thing with the marbles, they're counting the marbles again and again. Anyways, I'm just saying, so the Ebishta loves the Yidn, so therefore he counts them constantly. But that's the way it's explained all over. Today I want to talk about, we have to add always, today I want to talk about some points which are not always discussed as preparation to Shavuos. They are, but we bring it out different ways. So first of all, over here, the Pasuk says, um, at the beginning of Bamidbar, what does Hashem say when we're using the word? When we talk about counting, what do we say? The Pasuk says, So'u Esroish. So'u Esroish. Take a census, that's how we translate it. But So'u Esroish literally means pick up their heads. So this concept is really discussed in many places in the Torah. It applies to Kisisa, Pasha's Kisisa, Su'a Sereish. You can also talk about the idea of Nosai, which by the way, Pasha's Bamidba and Nosai have a common denominator, which is the counting and the census. There's more common denominators that we'll soon get to soon. So the word that's connected to counting is Su'u Esreish. So the general interpretation over here, and as the Rishonim bring out in different version, su'u esroish means raise them, lift them up. Like when a person's head is raised high with pride. So there's one message over here, immediately, and as a preparation for Matan Torah, we have to realize that the Torah is the way that every single Yid will rise. Every single Yid would reach his ultimate, making his ultimate self, his better self, maximizing his potential, healthy physically, mentally, emotionally, etc. So, Suas Reish, this is what Mantir is all about, elevating the Jews. Suas Reish, in a deeper Hasidic meaning, I don't want to elaborate on this now, is that the word Reish goes on Moichin, the intellect, Chabad, faculties of the soul, and Suas Reish means even the head, which is Chabad, has to be in touch with the essence, with Etzam Nefesh, which means that the essence itself, which is even higher than intellect, will permeate even all of the faculties, that the faculties, even the head, becomes elevated. But that's already a deep concept. So Suas Reish has that interpretation, of Jewish pride and positivity. Lift them up. Now, how do we see also immediately the connection to Matan Torah? Because the first words in this week's parsha, and this is going to be connected also to Suas Reish, is Vayedaber Hashem Moshe B'midbar Sinai. Hashem is speaking B'midbar Sinai. So the Sefer is called B'midbar Yes, Sefer Bamidbar, and the words of Bamidbar Sinai. What do we know about Rosh Chodesh Sivan? And what is the introduction to the Aser Sadibris and Pashas Yisrael? A grand announcement. Bachodesh Ashlishi, Lutzeiz Mene Yisrael, Meretz Mitzrayim, Bayeim Azebo Midbar Sinai. So when we talk about Rosh Chodesh Sivan, we say, we make an announcement, how wow, it's so special, this is the day we arrived at Sinai. And the next Pasuk says, Vayisu mefidim, vayavoyim midbar Sinai, vayachnu midbar, vayichan shom Yisrael neged ahor. By the way, I forgot to mention, in Lubavitch and Chabad, we have called, labeled, so to speak, the Shabbos midbar Shabbos Achtos, 
all over the Chabad, Lubavitch community around the world. It's called Shabbos Achtos, the synagogues, various Chabad shuls get together, yeshivas. It's a Shabbos Achtos. The Rebbe initiated, instituted that the Shabbos before Shavuos, Shabbos Bamidbar, should be called Shabbos Achtos. And the connection is because Vayichan Shem Yisrael Keneged Ar, that over there by Har Sinai, Ki'ish Echad Belev Echad, everyone was united, and that made them a vehicle to receive the Torah. As we said, the act, the revelation at Sinai itself had to be only when all of the Yidin were united. So therefore, as a preparation to that, we stress the Achtos, the unity of the Jewish nation. The Jewish nation is one unit, one body. We're all connected. So now let's go back to this pasuk here. In Yisrael. And therefore, when it comes to Bamidbar, and it says right away at the beginning of the Pasha, by Dabar Hashem Omeisha Bamidbar Sinai, we straight away remind ourselves, by Yehimazeh Bo Midbar Sinai, that what is Midbar Sinai? Midbar Sinai is where we receive the Torah. With the greatest, greatest, greatest experience in the history ever happened. Now there's a Ura Chaim over there in Pasha's Yisrael. On the Pasuk, right after it says, Bayei Mazer Bo Midbar Sinai, it says, the Ura Chaim explains, Vayisur Mefidim, Vayavoy Midbar Sinai, Vayachnu Midbar. I'm going to say it very, very briefly. But the Ura Chaim says that over here, the Pasuk is mentioning three things that are requirements as a preparation to receive the Torah. Three steps. And it all fits with Chassidus, beautiful, without elaborating. And the first thing he says is, Vayisum Rafidim, which means they have to go away from Rafidim, Yudeim, which means that a person is missing motivation. He's a bit lazy. He's not strong in his diligence, in his Hasmodo. You have to work, work very hard, a mal Torah in order to acquire Torah. So by Yisum Rafidim, we have to move beyond Rafidim. We have to graduate from any laxity or diminishing of intensity, of concentration and effort involved in acquiring Torah knowledge. That's the first thing. So we have to toil, working to understand the Torah. Then it says, Vayavoyamid Basinai. And what does the Erechaim say? And this is what I want to really I'll read his words because it's safer by Midbar. And he says as follows The Indian Shani who are shiftless via Nova. Humility. A person has to look at himself like he's not Mr. Hot Stuff. Like he's not Mr. Full of, full of the greatest, attractive, glorious things. You have to be humble. In a certain sense, you have to see yourself as barren, as a desert. He says like a desert that everyone treads upon it. Like earth. The Apostle says, and we say it every day, our soul should be considered like earth, like dust. And then we say, How do you make yourself a vehicle for the Torah? Through humility. I don't want to elaborate now. We spoke about the subject many times because since the Torah is infinite, it's God's wisdom, Hashem's knowledge, so it's godliness. So the vehicle to take infinity is not through your existence, but through your non-existence. By making yourself transparent, by nullifying yourself, then you make yourself a vehicle for the big, infinite wisdom of Hashem. And that's the rule. The more a person, like so to speak, let's say to talk in practical language, to be objective. What does it mean for a person to be objective? To be objective means you have to go out of yourself. You're able to see, open yourself up to another side, to another view, to a bigger picture, to differing opinions. The more a person stuck in his own perspective, and his own agenda, then it'll be a contradiction to be able to see anything which is outside of himself and his limited knowledge. So too we say concerning Torah, the first, first 
requirement is that a person should have humility. This is something which really demands more and more people talking about how humility is the most underrated virtue and how important it is in day to day life, in every single area of your life, in relationships, interpersonal relationships, and with Hashem, of course. Now, it goes without saying that humility doesn't have to be a contradiction to positive self esteem. <laughs> and it goes without saying, and this is another point, and now is not the time to get into the whole subject. But this is also the beauty over here. Straight away, when we say, Bamid Bar Sinai, and that's the beginning of the Parsha, which over here the Erechaim is saying that, that the point of Bamid Bar is humility. At the same exact thing, two words later, we say, Su'u Esraish, pick them up, make them feel pride, be full of Jewish pride. So we see it's not a contradiction at all. And the truth is, that's exactly how it's explained concerning Har Sinai. Moch Mikol Turi, the famous talk about if Hashem wants to give the Torah in the... Uh, why was Sinai chosen? Because it was the most small of all the mountains. Famous question, if we're looking for small, why do we have to have a mountain? Just give the Torah in a valley. No. We need the combination of both of these traits in the person. On the one hand, he's full of Jewish pride. On the other hand, he's full of humility because it's not pride which is associated with vanity. It's not pride which is associated with ego. It's pride because of the powers that God believes in me. God has faith in me. Hashem says that I am special. I matter because Hashem says I matter, etc., etc. So that sort of pride is something that inspires the person, galvanizes the person more and more to grow and to man of himself, demand of himself more and more. Not because he's not good, because he always feels he could do better and better. And he's doing it besimcha, just like somebody who's an athlete and he wants to be the champion. He's working on himself and demanding himself. <laughs> and is he happy? He'll say he's the happiest person in the world. Because he's reaching heights that he never th that, that, that he wants to reach. It takes hard work. And it's connected to pride. But it's healthy pride, hopefully, in an athlete. So in any case, and the answer is, again, we will have to be a mountain on one hand. You know, when it comes to fighting for the right principles, when it comes to realizing that there are truths like the Torah, that are not subject to whims and moods. And we believe in those truths. And that gives us a pride. We're connected to something which is higher than the world. But at the same time, we realize that if it was just me, based on my own faculties, on my own human limitations, so what am I already? So we have to have that combination, similar to the famous vert that says about a certain tzaddik, he kept two pieces of paper on him at all times. And one piece of paper, he had the Maimar Azal, which said, Bishvili nivra ilam. For me, the world was created. That's why it says, Lufich nivra Michidi. Man was created alone. He's the only creature that was created without a partner. And then Chava came from Adam. Why was Lufich nivra Michidi? Because, Bishvili nivra ilam. I have to change the world. I have to consider myself in a certain sense the most important thing that in my hands is dependent everything, the salvation of the entire mankind, just like if one yid was missing from Matan Torah, the whole Matan Torah wouldn't happen. But on the other hand, there's another piece of paper that I had, my Nuchi offer of the Eifer. I have to have another piece of paper that says, I am nothing but dust and ashes. So it's the healthy combination of these two feelings together. You're a mountain because you're connected to things that are giants, cliffs, the Ovis, Tzadikim, Hashem, Torah, Mitzvahs. That makes you like a mountain. On the other end, if you look at yourself just by yourself, then you're humble. So we see right away now, Parsha. But Midbar Sinai tells you on one hand, Mesem Atzmai Kimidbar. Humility. Two seconds later, su'u esreish, a combination. Similar to the idea of Har Sinai itself. Finally, by the way, over here, the Rechaim says, after that, the third thing is the idea of Ayichan Shom Yisrael, and he says, Yud Chachomim Bezchabrus Belev Sholem V'tomim. He speaks about the idea that Yisvadu Yachad, communities should bring together 
And this is the idea of Avos Yisrael. See the Erechayim over there. So, so far we spoke about toiling in Torah, we spoke about the Midbar humility, but at the same time, pride, ultimate pride. You matter, you really matter, because Hashem decided you matter, and also Avos Yisrael connecting with another Yid. Now, there's another amazing thing, which is, I think we should speak about one common denominator between Parshas Bamidbar, Nasoi, is about the Levim. And it talks about the different jobs of every Shevet. That's going to be in this week's Parsha, next week's Parsha. And he also says over here, talking about Shevet Levi, that they were not counted with everyone else. And the Pasuk says, in Pasuk Mem Zayin, in Kapitel Aleph, I'm sorry, Pasuk Mem Tes, Aydabar Hashem Omei Shalema, Aches Mati Levi Loi Sifkoit. Don't count the tribe of Levi. And Rashi says, Kedayu Ligyoin Shalmelech. The king's legion is worthy. Lies Nimnelevade to be counted by itself. He brings another reason. Rashi brings another reason. The other reason is another reason to show how Shevet Levi was different. So therefore they can't be counted with everyone else. But these words alone are worthy of focusing on. Shevet Levi, the whole tribe, is focused on spirituality. So therefore they're counted differently. And this we have to know also as a preparation to Matan Torah. That every single one of us has an aspect of Shevet Levi. And the Rebbe used to quote this Rambam. I would say this is one of the most quoted Rambams that the Rebbe quoted, and that's from Hilcha Shmita V'yevil Peri Yud Gimel Halacha Yud Gimel, and I'm going to read it quickly. V'loi Shevet Levi Bulvad, and not only the tribe of Levi, Elakol Ish V'Ish Mikol Bo Yoilom, but every single person from the entire world, which in a certain sense he's including over here even non-Jews. Which is unbelievable, but let's. Elakolish viish mi kol boyaila, mashinidva ruchoyoisoi, whose spirit generously mo- generously motivates him. Vivino mada, lai bodel lamed lufne hashem, and he has the uh, knowledge and the maturity to set himself aside. To stand before Hashem, l'shor soy la'avdoi, l'deya savaye, v'hilich yoshar. He dedicates himself to elevate himself, to grow in his knowledge of Hashem, and he's and he walks straight. He's honest and he's just. Upoyik me'al tavori oy la'chashboyne sarabim, asher bikshu bnei adam, and he removes from his neck the many reckonings and accountings. Which people seek. Harezen is Kaddish, Kaddish, Kadoshim, Vyashem, Chilkoi, Nachlosoi, Le Oilam, Le Ome, Elomim. Wow, wow, wow. He becomes sanctified with the holiest of holies, and Hashem is considered his portion. So, what is not <laughs> repeated many times when we speak about this Rambam is that the Rambam describes what the person has to do is he has to leave he has to set himself aside to stand before Hashem, which means he's not preoccupied with his personal needs and his personal desires. He focuses on serving others, serving mankind, bringing benefit to others. And therefore, connected to that, the Rambam says clearly, You know, you have regular people. What are they worried about? We're not blaming anyone. We're not judging anyone. But we're talking about what does it mean that the Rambam is saying that in a way we have to try to elevate ourselves. And elevating ourselves means that 
we're not thinking like just everyone else is thinking. Everyone else is thinking how they're going to put food on the table, how they're going to pay the mortgage, and whatever it is. How am I going to be able to relax? I'm not saying over here a person not to relax. And of course, everyone should have how to pay the mortgage. But the question is, the majority of time, what is occupying your brain space? That's what the Rambam is saying over here. That the person is Nidva Liboy to dedicate himself to be considered like Shavit Levi. And every single one of us has that aspect. And the Rebbe mentioned this many times. You could say this is the whole idea of the Shlichus concept. Where everyone is a Shliach, the Rebbe said. So the idea of Shlichus means that the person, and this is the healthiest thing for himself and for his family and for his entire life, is that he becomes a bit less preoccupied with self and dedicates himself to a higher cause. That's the focus. And that's what it means to be part of Shevet Levi. And the Rambam makes it so clear and it's so inspiring to read his words over here that kol ish ve'ish asher nidva ruchoi oisoi every person that decides to dedicate himself in such a way but it means then you have to try to graduate and elevate and rise not to have your mind full of regular mundane thoughts that other people might have and try to rise and elevate yourself to become more spiritual but obviously it means that you're action oriented orientated to help others etc and that's the connection also with Pashas Bamidbar that we see in this week's Pasha that the Abish to set aside Sheva Levi and then in next week's Pasha we're going to learn right before she was it speaks all about Sheva Levi and the different families in Shevet Levi, Kahas, Merari, all that. Anyways, now let's just connect it to a Mishnah in Pekei Avis. The whole Pelech Shishi of Pekei Avis talks about Kenyan Torah, and that's why it's learned Pelech Shishi before Shavuos, because the focus is on how great Torah is, how we have to cherish Torah, and therefore that's the discussion. We're running out of time, so we'll just finish a couple of words shortly, and this is the Mishnah, and Pedi Vav Mishnah, the second Mishnah, Amr Bishur Ben Levi, he talks about Bechol Yom V'yoyim Baskal Yoytzis Mahachayrev, that there's an echo that comes out and demands from us to occupy ourselves in Torah. But then he says, Va'alucha Yismaisi Alekim Eimo, the tablets that Hashem gave us, the Luchais, were the work of Hashem, Va'amichtav Michtav Alekim Hu, and the writing was the writing of Hashem, Choros HaLaluchos, engraved on the tablets. And over here we have the famous words, Al Tikra Choros HaLacheros. It doesn't mean only engraved, but the word engraved is connected to freedom. She'en l'cha ben chayren, elamisha isig betal Torah. The true man is the one who learns Torah. You want to be liberated? You want to be a free man? Occupy yourself in Torah. This is everything we spoke about today. So, whoever occupies himself with Torah, what a beautiful word that is. Anyone who occupies himself with the study of Torah becomes elevated. <laughs> is there a better word than elevated? Elevated means to no end. Elevated means in every area of your life. You know, the wonder drug, the wonder pill, the wonder miracle. Call me chasing with Talmud Torah. You want to get elevated? You want to get free? Learn Torah. These are different names where people traveled, but the Mishnah is learning it in the way of Drush from the place called Matana, which means the gift. could also be called the gift. We went to a place called Nachliel, which is a Nachla, a heritage of Hashem. And then we came to Bamais. Bamais represents Meloshim Bama to a high place. So when you study Torah, you get elevated. First you get the gift, then it becomes like really part of you. That's your inheritance, that's your heritage. And then we come to Bamais, which means to no end. Like when we say the word Mimal, Mimal to no end. So this is what we have to 
stress on the Shabbos before Shavuos, this idea that is there anybody out there that doesn't want to be free? Is there anybody out there that doesn't want to be liberated? And the Rebbe explains two reasons. One reason is because the true nature of a Yid, to be free means when your true nature, your essence is able to express itself totally. Today we have a word called self-expression. For a Yid, self-expression means when his nefesh kiss is able to be expressed, the more the merrier, and that makes you a free man. So Torah is the key, learning Torah, connecting to Hashem through Torah, is the key to unleash your self-expression to the utmost. And the second thing is because Torah is Hashem who is infinite, and the way for you to rise above the limitations of creation, of creations, is through learning Torah, which is Yichud Niflash and Yichud Kamei, we connect with infinity, and this is the way we travel on the infinity highway. They should help. We should take all these lessons of occupying ourselves in Torah, thinking about how we can serve others, being Shevet Levi is a twofold avoda within ourselves to try to work always higher and develop ourselves more in self-development, etc., and changing for the better. And the same thing Shevet Levi means that he's directed towards others and he's dedicated himself to a higher cause. And finally, also we spoke about Achtos, and finally, to have a gishmak, to realize that Torah is the way. And that's how we become all free. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos. And posting from my home, Be'ez Shemiz Baruch, your man in Melbourne.